Calling from a relatively not too popular candidate or a man that many Nigerians in the country and outside are rooting for, you'll not be wrong as uh, Peter Obi has uh, been able to rise from some relative obscurity from being just uh, a PDP member to a presidential candidate of Nigeria's Labour Party. Joining us to unpack his plans for the country is his special advisor on public affairs, Dr. Catch on Onoju. Catch on Onoju, good to see you and thanks for your time as always. Thank you very much for having me. I'm and forever, as usual, very happy to be with you. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 Peter Obi is in the news. Uh, let's quickly, you know, delve into that. And some of the key things he said is that I will not be attending any fora where the other candidates are not in attendance. Take us through how he arrived at this. Do you think, uh, well, uh, it's good to play tit for tat now in Nigeria's political space? Well, I will tell you, I was sitting right there. I was sitting beside Juno Melai, and uh, as we were there, and we said, uh, why is Atiku not here? Dino turned around and said, Atiku cannot come here. He's too big for these people. And that was how a lady beside me said, how do you say that? And people said, no, no, we won't take it. Everybody now stood up spontaneously in reaction to what he said. So as the commotion was there, the call Bible now walked down to me and said, Catch what's going on? I said, Dino said that Atiku would not come, that he's too big for the crowd. And the whole people, as they heard that, did not try to deny. And we told him, we have him on tape. Once we say that, he kept quiet. He's sorry. By that time, the crowd has heard him. And they said, no, they will not agree. It is a presidential town hall meeting for presidential candidates. In democracy, like we, as we copied it from the U.S. states, when there is a meeting for presidential candidates, presidential candidates attend. When it's a meeting for vice presidential candidates, vice presidential candidates attend. And it was at that point that the commotion came, and uh, we now said, no, we will not do this. Mm. We would not have this kind of thing happen if exactly the intention is as has been relayed to the crowd by Dino's words, that Atiku is too big to come here. And then uh, you know Dino is a clown, and he plays a comedian everywhere. I don't know if he understands that words have meanings. And, you know, uh, you, you, you know that, Kaj, 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 I think, I think Kaj, many Nigerians will understand, but again, as unpalatable as that will be, uh, in the mouth, some would th say that Peter Obi could also change the dynamics uh, of Nigeria political, you know, culture, as you highlighted, talking about the United States. I, I monitored the elections in Kenya. Uh, we were live there in Kenya, and we saw that the only man who attended the debate is today seated in the Oval Office in Kenya as president. So why don't you think that your candidate should have a rethink, uh, perhaps, to always engage Nigerians, irrespective of what other candidates are saying? Well, we are also Nigerians, and uh, my candidate has spoken to Nigerians. He's always been there talking on live television, taking live answers and answering back. But it's also very good if we could, through our own actions, help Nigerians to force those who intend to rule them to be available to speak to Nigerians, to answer questions. When I bring my own candidate who is presidential candidate, I believe common sense says others should also bring their own. If they're hiding something, I know in the case of Asiwaju uh, Tinibu, yes, I could understand. He has problems, he has shaky hands, he has problems forming a fist. And we have also seen the issues of the uncontrollable urinations and the, the incoherence in speech, so I can understand that. But Mr. Tiku, but, not but, to but, show but, up. But, but did, you, did, you hear the, did you hear the APC candidate ask everyone, asking pointedly, do I look like a sick person to you? It does not matter what he says. That's the beauty of democracy, through interrogations and him making himself publicly available we have seen his issue 
of uncontrollable urination. So, so are, are you saying uh, uh, a minute here, yeah, uh, catch because that's uh, uh, unverifiable. Are you saying that all candidates can also subject themselves before uh, you know some medical examination? What we have seen is we are also Nigerians, and there is nothing wrong with all seeing uh, the interrogation to become open. If I could bring my candidate and get him to and have him judged by Nigerians, I think others should also be subjected to the same standards. And that's why I think if I can bring my own candidate and he could speak to Nigerians and he could be interrogated, I think others should also be able to do the same. When they do not do it, I should, as a Nigerian, demand that the standards be the same for everybody. If I demand that I be treated the same way others are treated and that others also be subjected to the same conditions that I'm subjected to, I don't think that is too much to wish for. So, so if every time my candidate is asked for, because at the very beginning, when we visited this and he was going to TV and people were calling me say, why are you getting him go every time? I said, listen, in the United States, it is not through surrogates that the candidates speak to the people. It is the candidate that speaks to the people. And I believe there's a need for Peter to speak to Nigerians, to tell them his message, not to be speaking to Nigerians through surrogates. And that's why we've put him so much in the public space. It was done purposely. And now there is a need to have him on the same platform as other candidates so he could speak, others could speak, and they could all be judged. So, so uh, uh, Katja, Katja, are you saying your party is calling for a debate? You want to have every candidate and your party's uh, uh, candidate uh, on the same podium uh, to debate on issues of national importance? Or can put this uh, on on the on the network. I think I have a freeze there on the connection uh, to catch on energy. He's a special advisor to Peter Obi. He's saying quite a lot. They're talking about the culture of politics that must uh, change in Nigeria, and uh, that is why. Uh, well, he's uh, also alluding to the fact that perhaps his candidate Peter Obi may have a rethink, uh, since uh, if Nigerians want him to have a rethink to keep talking to Nigerians, perhaps that may happen. Uh, now, Catch, I see you back. Many thanks, Catch. Uh, I lost you for a bit there. Quickly, uh, let's, let's delve into some of the key things uh, that your party... Uh, well, let's scratch that. Before that, you are a strong, you know, advocate for good governance. Uh, all what you do at the Heritage Center, we see them. And, of course, Nigerians are still trying to understand how in so short a time Peter Obi and yourself uh, who were big supporters of uh, the PDP have so now all of a sudden uh, now see the PDP uh, as perhaps one of the negative things that have happened to Nigeria. At what point, Catch, did your candidate or yourself uh, see the PDP in that bad light to have moved to the Labour Party? We are, we were members of the PDP. But when we saw that the members of the PDP who left to go and form a coalition with other Nigerians to bet the Buhari presidency, returned back to the PDP, they have the same mindset that we saw for which Nigerians condemn President Buhari, which is the embrace and employment of nepotism as policy. We believe for the Nigerian project to work properly, you needed to embrace the aspirations of the diverse people of Nigeria. These people, when they came back, they did not believe that inclusion and equality, equity, justice, and fairness should be what the PDP used to be. The PDP was built on the mindset of inclusion. The PDP was built on an arrangement 
that saw the diverse populations of Nigeria to belong to the same basket. It was not built as a place where only one segment, only one religion, only one ethnicity should continue to rule Nigeria. We believe very much in zoning. We participated properly. And we also believed that if I showcase a man today and not, not again, <laughs> certainly not again, but again, uh, we'll, we'll hope Catch will join us again. Uh, so far, Catch has said, on account of, uh, you know, inclusion, which was particularly absent in the PDP uh, himself and a few others left. And again, uh, he doesn't think uh, it was wise for some of those who left the PDP to the APC and from the APC back to the PDP. Uh, was a good deal for the party. Uh, Catch, uh, I see you're back uh, quickly here uh, uh, because we really need to touch on the plans of your party. How, how much of uh, you know, an incursion you've been able to make uh, in the north of Nigeria, northern Nigeria, selling the Labour Party uh, party's uh, manifesto? Well, the biggest part of the Labour Party's trick is the embrace by the Nigerian youth of our message. As you can see, an organic group of young people project on them on their own. And we believe that is very, very organic. That's what we have in Labour Party that no other party has. For the youth who represent 72% of the Nigerian voting population, so now on their own, wake up from the attempt to violently suppress them two years ago by the ruling party, to now embrace the Labour Party. We believe that's a good thing. These are some of the things I saw and I told myself, it's no use staying put with the dinosaurs. It makes every sense for me. And so we have another freeze there with, uh, well, that connection to catch on and do. You know, uh, there's nothing as good as a physical presence in the studios having the, an uninterrupted conversation uh, with uh, catch. When catch comes back, we'll be asking if the same, you know, following, the same kind of acceptance he's uh, spoken of is uh, what he's getting from uh, northern Nigeria. Catch, you're here. Uh, you were saying, perhaps uh, let us in. Do you still have that same uh, court following you spoke about for your candidate in northern Nigeria? Because many politicians are still talking about structure. We do not believe in the stories about structure. We think those stories about structure are fraudulent. These are structures that are used to rig elections in Nigeria. We believe the people are the structure. We believe the youth are the structure. The structures of fraud, that's the structures of those who rig. Due to the amendment to the Electoral Act, we now saw there is no more need for us to have the structure that you will need to rig. The people are our structure. The youth are our structure. The organic movement on the Nigerian street are our structure. The 72% of Nigeria's voting population are our structure. The young people who have been denied access to our national commonwealth are our structure. We believe 72% of Nigeria's voting population is enough for us to say we have structure. The people of Nigeria, all who are now embracing the Labour Party, are our structure. We knew that the organic movement started by the youth will in time be embraced by their mothers. We also understood their fathers may not come along quickly because their fathers may have business ties, political ties, or sociological relationship that may make them tally a bit and watch what the youths are doing. So we thought, following the youths, with time, the fathers will follow. Right now, we have the youths and their mothers. You can see what happened in Lagos State when the youth were marching. 
the son of the deputy governor who man actually followed the youth. We do not want to say no to the ends of the youth. We believe with the youth, we have majority. We believe with the youth, we have not what no one else has. We believe with the youth, we must be available to give them that what they want. And what do they want? They want to employ Pitobi to become the face of their masquerade. The youth are our tomorrow. And we think it makes sense for us to embrace the youth rather than stay with the dinosaurs. We believe that the Nigerian youth represents the tomorrow of our country. We believe the youth have been so cheated in this country. We believe that the politics of one man sees him. Look at Lagos State, where Bolatinibo has become the parasite of Lagos. We do not want that kind of politics. We seek the politics that of inclusion, a policy where the Nigerian youth will be part and parcel of that which we are doing. We want the youth to take back their country. We believe in an inclusive Nigeria, a Nigeria where you would not have a set of people performing state capture. You could see what happened two weeks ago. It took the efforts of the international community to stop the attempt by the ruling party to allow bandits to overrun Abuja. What will happen? If the bandits have overrun Abuja, the army will come and then the democracy will be truncated. So we thank very much the alert raised by the United States, the United Kingdom, by Canada, by Australia. And quickly, by, let, let me let me bring in this. Uh, let, let, let's close on this, uh, Catch. You know, I, I have a copy of uh, the 80 page, uh, you know, uh, document uh, of the manifesto. Uh, of Balatinbu, the candidate of the APC. Uh, I also have the soft copy. And people have been asking, where is the manifesto of the Labour Party? Our manifesto is being fine-tuned. I also want to remind you, the manifesto, yes, it's important, but then ask yourself, what happened? to the previous manifesto of the APC. If you're going to tell me about manifesto and you tell me the APC and say, look at the manifesto they brought, what about the manifesto that the APC brought? What in the manifesto was actually embraced by President Buhari after he was turned into office? So when you tell me APC has brought manifesto, I will tell you it is simply some document to deceive the population. I want you to look at the product. If you want to actually predict the future, the best thing to do is to study the past. If you want to predict the future by the APC manifesto, study the past of APC manifesto. So look at Peter Obi. Everything he said he would do in Anambra, he did. He's a man of his words. We are now looking for a way to retrieve Nigeria from the hands of those who have performed state capture I have seized our country and are now stealing the oil directly themselves. You heard what Mr. Mahdi said. The Army, the Navy, the NMPC agreed that since 2016, the APC has been stealing the oil, selling it to the extent that today, no single cent, no single naira has been remitted to the Federation account by the NMPC. Why? The APC people, have been stealing our oil and selling it directly and not remitting nothing well, to well, the Well, can't you agree? Because we both know that the, the oil thievery didn't just start in 2015 or 2016. It's always been there specifically uh, since uh, the coming of democracy since 1999. So it will be uh, uncharitable for anyone to put that blame on another political party from the time of the PDP till this moment. But quickly, let's, let's close on this. Since we don't have a, a ready document, you say it's been fine-tuned. Uh, your special advisor to Pete Orby, you already have an idea of what this uh, document will contain. Uh, take us through, you know, briefly, if we can do this in a, about a minute or two, what Nigerians are likely to get from a Peter Orby government. You will see the embrace of agriculture. You will see the use of the arable lands across Nigeria 
mostly in the north, to become the new crude oil. You will see where merit becomes the order of the day. You will see the reverse of brain drain so that the best of Nigeria's intelligent people who have been trained in our universities will be put to use locally in Nigeria. You will see us work to actually allow the girl child to become a very useful citizen in our country. You will see us avail the oil industry, the capacity to increase the oil explorations, to actually increase our reserves. You will also see that monies that accrue from Nigeria's export earning in oil are actually remitted to the federation accounts. Currently, for the past seven months, no single penny has been remitted to the federation account from the sale of oil. Why? Some people are still in the oil. As you said, that there has been oil being stolen. There has never been a time in Nigerian history when no money is being remitted to the country's federation account from the sale of oil. Today, we've had it for seven months. No single penny has been remitted by NMPC to the federation account from the sale of oil. You have not again. <clears throat> well, anyway, uh, well, it's uh, catch. Maybe say that He's they back. get. I am here. Yeah, you, I, I, I see you're back. I see you're back. You, you, you need to fit, catch. You need to finish strong. We will give you what you dream of. We will give you what Peter will be promises he will give you. <clears throat> Peter is a man of his words. He will do more. If you want to calculate the candidates, look at what they said before. What is this? How come the PDP has not been able to speak to what Mr. Madi was finding difficult to talk about? What Mr. Autumn was talking is that there has been a slow motion war in the Middle Belt, and people are being killed, ethnically cleansed of their land. The, Mr. Tuka Bubaka has not spoken against this. He has kept quiet. I have been the one in PDP who have been challenging this on television. But all the leaders like Atika Bubaka have been very, very afraid to speak to the problems of ethnic cleansing. That's why you see Mr. Autumn saying he cannot trust anybody who cannot stop the ethnic cleansings in the Middle Belt. Today, in Kasena State, in Zamfara State, in Sokoto State, in Kaduna State, in Plateau State, in Taraba and Benue, Nigerians are living in IDP camps. And Mr. Tuka Bubaka is not able to find the courage to speak against his ethnic cleansing because he thinks he needs the friendship of those directly involved in these issues of ethnic cleansing. And that's a place we where we say thank you for being such nice company. Catch on Onoju, Director General of the Heritage Center. We'll take a moment, we'll come back for the cut. Well, Ghana has an abundance of gold, but the country's economy at the moment is far from glittering. Indeed, all that glitters is not gold. Amid leadership troubles and a fast declining economy, citizens are far from happy with the government of the country. Nigeria and Ghana share a lot historically, from the popular Jalof war to football, art and culture, and now leadership failures and sinking national currencies, both countries' citizens are held in a chokehold by bruising policies and hapless economic decisions. Now, two of West Africa's foremost economies are far from settled, and all fingers point to leadership. Leadership continues to be Africa's greatest challenge, and as Nigeria prepares for its next presidential election, all eyes are on the people. Your thumb is as good as your future. Don't chew it. Chew on this. I'm Sulaiman. I'll see you again.